are important. Um, and uh, it's very simply a matter of, of teaching children to have respect for one another. It's not, you know, this isn't dictatorial. It doesn't have to be oh, the thought police are coming. It's, it's simply a very straightforward matter of saying to boys and girls that you are both equal and you should um, treat each other as equals. And if that doesn't happen, it's very noticeable very quickly that as young as five and six, um, girls and boys are, are, are already off down different paths. Rachel Johnson, not dictatorial at all. Do you mm. agree? I, I half agree. I mean, I think I agree that there is a problem, you know, from the fact that we've only got 25% MPs, 25% judges or 21% of women CEOs to the fact that Jennifer, Jennifer Lawrence doesn't make the same moolah as Bradley Cooper in the same Hollywood movie. But I don't think necessarily the answer to this problem is to have the thought police operating in our playgrounds. I mean, I've all I've done, like you probably, is read a report of these new gender policy, this gender, what do you call it, uh, guidelines that are going to be operational in schools. And it worries me that children who I think should learn from their peers and also from their parents are going to be subject to a sort of gender policing at such a young age. The other thing that worried me about what I read was that it was teams of girls who were going to go around reporting on the boys. And I just don't think that's how you learn in life and get your corners knocked off. I read the same report as, as Rachel did. And it, it, there was, I mentioned that one of the schools, as I understand it, that is trialing this will be asking girls in the school to take note of what's being said in the playground. So I'm not sure that translates totally to a sort of, to gender policing. But it is girls um, snitching on boys, isn't it? I mean, well, know. I think that was, as I said, the, the article I read in, in the paper today is the same as everybody. I think it was one school had asked girls in that school to, to listen. Um, I think, um, you know, I have a daughter who's six and um, I have a daughter who's 13. And, and both of them um, were treated very differently um, by the boys in their classes from very, very young ages. Um, and, um, you know, and the same thing happened to me when I was at school. And I would come home and, and say, you know, oh, it's not fair. And, oh. and my mum would say, oh, just ignore them, just ignore them. Um, and, and now my daughters are coming home to me saying, you know, the boys say I'm not good enough to do this because I'm a girl. And I'm thinking, I don't want to tell them to ignore it. I don't want to be the next generation of women to say, just ignore it. Why should girls be told to toughen up? Well, I don't think they should necessarily be told to toughen up. I, mean, I think we're sort of this idea of having gender guidelines in schools ignores a lot of what is actually happening in schools. And it worries me that these guidelines are going to actually emphasise gender difference rather than try and just say little boys and little girls should be taught equally, they are equal. And I think that this, I don't like the emphasis on it. I think that it's going to make a, a climate of sort of fear and, you know, are you stepping out of line the whole time? I don't want that happening in schools where I think it is a process of learning and, but if you, and if you... finding your way and, and, and boys learning to, that girls are equal just as much as girls reporting that boys have maybe told them they're not good enough or calling them cupcake. By the way, I'd never heard any of these expressions before, calling a girl cupcake, but maybe it's because well, I'm too old and, and I was actually sent to boys' schools. Man up. I know, but are we, do we, are we allowed to tell girls? I think girls and boys are told to man up. I think a lot of these expressions are simply um, sort of giddy up type expressions that aren't particularly gendered. Isn't there a danger, Sophie, that you are turning girls into victims at a rather young age? <laughs> Uh, no, um, I think what's happening um, is that uh, girls are being told that they, they don't have to put up with um, being referred to as second class citizens. You know, I've got six year old girls being told but you who can't. Who refers you... to girls as second class citizens? No, they're not using that terminology, but I have a girl who loves science and she loves superheroes, and the little boys in her class say that those things are not things for girls. And I, but I completely agree with you that this has got to happen well, with a whole load of really... other things. It's got to happen with a whole load of other things. Um, you know, the, the, it's all part of a whole raft of things that have all got to start to change together to, to send a, a message right across society that, that equality is, is, is a very simple and straightforward thing to happen and it, it really doesn't involve policing, it just involves mutual respect. Final word from you, Rachel. The, I mean, the evidence of women's educational achievements are that they are doing well throughout their school years. So it's not simply playground banter that's holding them back, it's their decisions 
not to do physics. It's their decisions, in a sense, to not to aim for higher paid jobs. That has created the unequal society we're in, and not just men squashing women down deliberately. Rachel Johnson, Sophie Walker, thank you very much for joining us.